Father God, we come before you, Lord, just saying thank you, God, for the opportunity that you have given us, Lord God, to just come before you, come before your presence and worship you, Father. Lord, we come before you praying and asking and pleading the blood of Jesus over every aspect of this service, Lord. From the time we get to the parking lot, Father God, to the greeters, to the ushers, to the choir, to the man of God who's bringing the word, Father. We cover it in the blood of Jesus. Father, we pray and we ask for those who are watching online and those who are here in the actual sanctuary, Father God, that whatever worries, whatever cares, whatever concerns, whatever problems, whatever it is, Lord God, that we're carrying with us this morning, God, that, Lord, we lay it at your feet, God. We thank you for that on-time word, Father, that you're going to give us, that we're not going to leave the same way, Father God, that we came in. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody give God some praise in the house this morning. How many of you are happy to be alive and we know we serve a great God? Would you be my extension to your neighbor to the left and the right? Tell them, welcome to the presence of God. Tell them, welcome to the presence of the Lord.
It's amazing to have a God that we can call on that never fails us. He's a prayer answering God. Can you tell your neighbor he's a prayer answering God? Everything changes when we call his name. I speak to you this week that over your health, over your week, Jesus, Jesus will be your covering. Jesus, Jesus will be your help. Jesus, Jesus will turn that situation around for your favor and your lifting. Would you just lift up your hands and exalt the name of Jesus Lord? We're going to love a God this morning because he's an amazing God. Hallelujah. Oh. One thing I desire, only this I see, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Will be my passion laying at your feet just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever. Say one thing I desire, only this I see just to dwell, just to dwell, dwell, dwell here forever.
Lift your hands and tell them. Say, we worship you. Say, my And your, and your adoration of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory. Lord, we exalt you this morning. Lord, we magnify you because you're worthy of our praise. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy over our lives, oh God. Lord, we take this moment to recognize you as a Lord over our lives. And we give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor and all of the adoration, oh God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, be exalted this morning in this house, oh God. Lord, take your place in this house, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And be lifted up today. We give you praise, we give you honor, we give you adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we worship. Amen. We give God praise. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this house. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you have begun with us, oh God. Lord, we pray, Lord, that you continue with us in the name of Jesus. We pray, Lord, that your glory will be revealed in this house and that all eyes will see your glory this morning. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you adoration. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. You may be seated at this time. I want to thank the milk and honey for leading us in an awesome time of praise and worship. The Lord bless you and increase you in the name of Jesus. And we thank our wonderful um, musicians for um, also ushering us into the presence of the Lord. Thank you so much. And God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We, I welcome everyone to the house of the Lord this morning. It's truly an, uh, a blessed day to be in God's house. And we give God all the praise and all the honor. And we especially thank you for being here this morning. And I know that the Lord has something for all of us this morning in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. So you're welcome this morning. 
We also want to welcome everyone that is worshiping online. Thank you for choosing um, Bethel to be your place of worship this morning. And I just ask you, don't be distracted as you're, as you're worshiping today. Just stay tuned, and the Lord will truly bless you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask, is there anyone, if this is your first time at Bethel, can you please raise your hand so that we can see you and recognize you? Amen. I see someone at, all the way at the back. Anyone else, this is your first time, please rise. Can you please stand so that we can see you and welcome you this morning? Amen. morning and we know that it's, it's not a coincidence that you're here we thank God for leading you and we also have a card and we ask for you to fill that card out and at the end of the service we will have a brief reception for you for us to get to know you a little bit better again thank you so much and God bless you in Jesus name amen amen we also want to recognize if this is your first time here if you've been if you started worshiping with us here at Bethel since um, this church opened, we would also like to recognize you this morning. So if you started with us here at this 1604 location or 1604 campus, can you raise your hand so that we can see you? If this is your first, if you started with us here at Bandera, can we ask you to please rise also? We want to recognize you, we want to see you. If you started with us here at, at um, 1604, can you stand? Anyone else? Yes, we have a few people at the back. Amen. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm going to ask those around them to please um, welcome them. I, this is not their first time, but thank them for being here. We, we very greatly appreciate you and we value you. And we thank you for being with us. And we truly pray that as you continue with us, um, the Lord will... Will, will, will touch you that your life will not remain the same. The blessings of God will rest on you in Jesus' name. Again, thank you so much, and God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. This is our month of Shekinah glory. Amen. The month of March is our month of Shekinah glory. And my prayer is that all of us will experience the Shekinah glory of God in our lives in Jesus' name. God bless you. Can we all please um, pay attention as we take the announcements for the week? Thank you so much. Welcome to Bethel Covenant Assembly of God. My name is Gabrielle, and on behalf of our pastors, Reverend John and Chidi Anyameke, we'd like to officially welcome you to the month of March, our covenant month of Shekinah glory. If this is your first time worshiping with us, we're so excited that you could be a part of today's Sunday service experience. Now please stay tuned for the following announcements. Join us for our midweek encounters, beginning with commanding the week in prayer every Monday at 6 a.m. Join us every Monday on Zoom for small group Bible study at 7 and intercessory prayer at 7.30 p.m. All college students are invited to take part in Students of Valor taking place every Tuesday at 8.15 p.m. at UTSA. Enjoy God's presence at our midweek services with Bible study taking place every Wednesday at 7 p.m. and prayer service every Friday at 7 p.m. Tune in to the Covenant Word broadcast, taking place every week on KSLR and KDRY Radio. Because God instituted this ministry to change the spiritual landscape of San Antonio. I 
may I tell you and announce to everyone here that God is in this place. I declare to you as God's servant, by the time you begin to see, just by being here this morning, your life will turn around for good. If you believe it, let me hear you say the amen. Give God a big clap of praise all over this place. Stay up to date with all that's happening at BCAG by connecting with us on our various social media platforms. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to save the date for the following events. Tell someone about Jesus at our church-wide evangelism taking place every Saturday during the month of March. BCAG get excited for the celebration of our very dear Pastor Chidi Anyameke taking place next Sunday. The decoration ministry is seeking volunteers to set up for this event, so if you're interested in becoming a part, please see your sister Caitlin right after the service. All women of BCAG, be sure to save the date for the South Texas Assemblies of God Women's Ministry Conference, themed fashion, taking place here at BCAG March 31st and April 1st. We would like to give a very special shout out to our very own Reverend John Yanyameke for the opportunity to give a lecture at the CMDA luncheon that took place at UT Health. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's announcements. We encourage you to share your favorite moment from today's worship experience using the hashtag The Bethel Experience. We pray that you enjoy the service and have a very blessed week. Clap your hands and give your praise. Amen. Amen. Some of you saw that clip and you wondered if that was your pastor. That was before the word was made flesh. Amen. Would you stand up with me? I want you to look for five people. The camera is going to be zooming on you. So make sure you're greeting someone with a smile. I want you to greet them in the name of the Lord and welcome them all over this building. Come on, come on, come on. Welcome them. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Don't, don't stay on the same spot. I said the camera will be catching you for the next five minutes. The more people you greet, the more blessings you get. How about that? The more people you greet, if you are watching us online, go ahead and share the stream. The more you share the stream, the more God blesses you. Let us know where you're watching from. Come on. on this side you are not moving maybe you don't want to get blessed the more people you greet the more you get blessed all over this building you have one more minute everybody clap your hands everybody quiet
is accusing you before God. You have the power to declare that you are blessed. Lift your right hand up. Shout, I am blessed. Some of you are looking. People are getting blessed. Lift your right hand up. Shout, I am blessed. Shout it again. I am blessed and highly favored. My life is blessed. My health is blessed. My destiny is blessed. My future is blessed. My home is blessed. My marriage is blessed. My ministry is blessed. If you believe it, let me hear your amen like fire. Whatever the devil has spoken against your life this year, by the mandate of heaven, that evil report is reversed in the name of Jesus. Come on, open your mouth, open your mouth, open your mouth. I said that evil report is reversed in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare that I am blessed. My life is blessed. No evil will befall me. No evil will befall this house. No evil will befall this church. Life is our portion. Declare, I will live and not die. I will fulfill the purpose of God for my life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Wave your hands one more time and shout hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God praise. I want to welcome you to service this morning. Your life will be transformed like you've never imagined before. You know, each time we come to church, the Bible says from scripture, death and life is in the power of what? The tongue. So when you hear a positive declaration, if you don't affirm it by saying amen, somebody else can get that blessing. So I'm saying it again. I said your life will be transformed like never before. Even the Bible says, let the weak say what? I am strong. There is power in your word. There is power in your word. The word of God declares, I shall not die. But I will live to what? Declare the works of the Lord. Somebody announced to you, you will not die. I lose your tongue to shout. I say you will not die. Somebody said, I will not die. Shout it loud so that the devil will know. I will not die. I will live to declare the works of the Lord. If you believe it, wave your hand and shout yes, yes, yes. Amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. This year, it shall be the best year you've ever lived. In fact, God told us this is our month of Shekinah glory. Every day of this month, you will see the glory of God. I wish you would say amen more than your neighbor so that you get blessed more than your neighbor. Somebody shout every day this month, I will see the glory of God. As we get ready to take our tithe and our offerings, David said, I would have fainted if not that I believe that I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Sometimes when you are going through the roughest seasons of your life, it's when you should declare your best seasons that is coming to you. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter what you are going through today. I announce to you by the, by the, by the word of God, the best days of your life, they are ahead of you. They are not behind you. Oh my God. I wish, I wish, you, I wish you, you understand what God is saying. Tell your neighbor, my best days are ahead of you. Say it again, my best days. I said my best days. Joy is coming in the morning. Don't whip in and joy for a night. Come on, come on, shout it. My best days are ahead of me. In this, in this ministry, we believe in the power of the word of God. It is the word of God, yes. It is the word of God that gave us the opportunity to stay where we are today. It's the word of God that moved us from Bandera Road to Sisino 4. The word of God. The word of God can transform. 
The word of God transformed eight people to thousands of people. I hope you know, it's not only the people that are sitting here that are members of Better, Including all those connected online, they're all part of this commission. Is somebody hear what I'm saying? So if you don't say amen, people are online collecting blessings. I said in the name of Jesus, this year, the Lord will glorify your destiny. Listen, so there was, a, there, was, there was someone in the church, they, they, they downsized in their company and, you know, they let some people go and pay them three months off. Then a month later, they called her back. But they've already paid three months off. You collected three months free rent, free uh, salary, and then you are reinstated to continue where you stopped. That, remember God promised us strange favor. How many of you remember God promised us strange favor? This week, this week, as you enter this week, uncommon favor you cannot explain. It will locate your destiny, locate your family, locate your children. If your amen is stronger than your neighbor, the Lord will manifest it in your life. Hallelujah. I read in the news the other day and they said to everyone that is working remotely that they are cutting off remote work. Right? That people should go back to the office. I remember about six months ago in Bandera, I told some of you, I said, even if they give you the option of remote, what should, I, what should, what should you do? Go back to the office. If you like remote job, find your way to the office before they cut you off. Find your way. Find your way back. Look for every excuse to sit on your seat. For thou maintainest my lot. Boundary lights are falling for me. What? Don't say I did not tell you. Don't say I did not tell you. When you come to the presence of God, you should also listen for instructions. Construction is necessary for promotion. Somebody hearing me? The word of God told you this year, as long as you are faithful in your tithe, no devourer will come near you. Did, did, did you hear what God is telling you today? Tell you about no devourer. No devourer. No devourer. No, absolutely no devourer. Devourers can be sickness. Devourer could be bad investment. Reverend, I know someone a pastor that took money and put everything in Bitcoin. $250,000. God also, my spirit told me, call this man. I said, bro, I don't go, I don't know. He said, call him, call this pastor that you know, call him. So I called him and I said, I don't know why the Lord told me to call you, but I feel that there's something in your spirit. Say, Pastor, I cannot tell anybody. You know, there's a, there, there are some problems that will hit you. You will lose appetite for your favorite meal. Yes. Took money, put there, and everything is gone. Whatever will deceive you to lose your whole income, by the Spirit of Jesus, you will not make that error. Journey, any journey. I'm telling you now, so you get ready as you get your tithe and offering ready. Anything that will make you lose your inheritance, make you lose your retirement, make you lose your home, make you lose your business, make you lose your job. Whatever decision, even if it is the word of your mouth, remember, even from the word of your mouth, you can lose all that God has given to you. Like the rich fool, the rich fool said, "Oh my soul, relax and eat." And God told him, this night your life will be required of you. And see who will get it. You know, you must be careful that when God has blessed you, you don't get carried away by the riches. There's deception in wealth. That's why I'm telling you, and I know God is blessing us. Now you are driving the car you want to drive. Now the AC is blowing you inside the car. Now you don't know how not to be rich. Give God his place, I'm telling you. So that the devil does not touch that which God has blessed you with. In this service, as you honor God, 
the devourer will not find your home address. As you hear the next song, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul. I want you to package your tithes and your offerings all over this building. Let no hand be empty. The Bible says, don't appear me before me empty-handed. In this auditorium, there are seven ways you can give. You can give with cash. You can give with check. You can give with push pay, PayPal, cash app. The credit card team is at the back. If you are giving with credit card or debit card, over there. If you have your tithes, I want you to step forward. You're also giving towards the building. We are not done yet. We are not done with construction. You're giving towards the building. Join them at the altar. I want to pray, pray special prayer for all those giving their tithes. If you have your tithes, step forward. Worship His holiness. You're giving towards the building. You're giving a special offering. Watching me online, the ways of giving are there. Type give. Digital ministry, please bring their names. If you are giving online, don't miss the opportunity. If, I, if there are people around you that don't have an offering, right? Squeeze an offering into their hand. When God blesses them, take half. Don't take, you know. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. But, but let no hand, I'm serious, in this auditorium, be empty handed. Don't appear before God. Just like you don't go to HEB. Right? I just, I, just, I, just, I just go to H-E-B and I just love these apples in the fresh produce section. And I just feel I should take it. Can you feel like taking it and walk out? Can you do that? But it's just how you feel. They will call the police on you. There is, there is holy police here. There's angels here. When you come to the presence of God, you are coming to get blessed, right? The Bible says you have robbed me. Malachi chapter 3. You have robbed me by not giving me tithes and offering. Some people don't like it when pastors talk about offering and tithes in the church. I like it. I like to talk about it because that's the only way you can get blessed. When you are blessed, you will be happy. But if you don't give, you won't get blessed. And I want you to be blessed. As your pastor, I want you to be blessed. And truly, you will be blessed. 
Now lift your tights above your head. Lift it up very high. Father, upon every hand that is given, on sight, online, release a supernatural blessing. Release favor that is uncommon. Release grace. Bless your people beyond measure. Do what no man can do. Rebuke the devourer for our sakes. Open the windows of heaven. Pour upon us a blessing that our room cannot contain. Wipe away tears from our eyes and give us joy unspeakable, full of glory. Be careful to return all glory and praise to you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Thank you. I love you. God bless you for giving. Choir, take it off into the presence of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Nobody watching but you. Oh, I worship with my last breath. Keep my all till there's nothing left. My focus is you. Jesus, you are my center. My heart, my treasure is found in you. I'll see your praises forever. My love, my life, I give to you. Say, I sing. I sing like there's nobody listening for you. Would you lift up your hands and sing? Sing, I will dance.
pretends like there's nobody that wants you like you. I'll worship with my last breath. Give my all to this night. Then let my focus in. Focus is on the Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Milka Honeycorn. One more time, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for all you've done for us. Thank you for being God in our lives. We worship and adore you. You remain our focus. Lord, accept our worship and our praise. Let it be a sweet smelling sour to you. It is in Jesus' name we have worship. God's people say amen. Clap your hands, give him praise one more time. Amen. Before you take your seat, I'm very delighted this morning to have in our, in our midst and in the house a uh, wonderful and amazing speakers that today is not their first time of being with us. As a matter of fact, this man and woman of God were the pastors that inaugurated this ministry about 10 years ago. Amen. I've known them since I was a child in Nigeria. You look at the almanac for pastors and you see the international missionary in the general council. And our God is a connector of destinies. And I'm very grateful this morning that they are here with us. They've also pastored my wonderful siblings, Dr. Greg and Dr. Esther, with the horn in Joss. And now, we have stronger connections than the, than the only horns. They don't like it, but okay. I have the microphone right now. This morning, we're privileged to have Reverend Scott and Lovona Ennis. Reverend Scott also has the wonderful name Musa. He has been a missionary in Africa since 1992, served in Nigeria, Senegal, and the Gambia. He's the founding principal of the Northeast Bible School in Densa, Adamawa State in Nigeria, and the president of Evangelical Theological Seminary in Jos, Plateau State, Nigeria. He's taught extensively in Bible schools and has been involved in church planting of over 600 churches in Africa. For 10 years, he served as the senior pastor, along with his wife, of Evangel Worship Center in Jos, in Nigeria. He's an ordained minister of the gospel with the Assemblies of God USA. He's married to his beloved wife, Lavona Ennis, who is a master pianist and a wonderful worship leader. And they're blessed with three children. This morning, would you welcome back to Bethel for the first time to our main campus. Welcome Reverend Scott and Reverend Lavona Ennis to God's headquarters in San Antonio. Let's give them a big God bless you. Hallelujah. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yabi Allah. Y'all don't know that one. Tono Chineke. And your little logo. Amen. You can be seated. It is good to be with you today. And uh, the last uh, several times that we visited your pastor and your church, we have been uh, at the other location. And it's a wonderful time for us to see what God has done for you. And how God has blessed your pastors and you 
And I want to say thank you for sacrificing and giving. It's not easy to have something like this. And we know that you sacrificed and you gave. And we want to say, may God bless you all in Jesus' name. And y'all might not like this one, but this is just the beginning. There's other places and there's other things to do. The kingdom of God has not finished. And so we work until he comes back. And so I know that God will help you and bless you. And you will be a great blessing to this area, to this state, and then all the way back to Africa and throughout the world. Amen. Amen. I'm very thankful to have my wife with me. She hasn't been able to travel uh, the last few times that we've been here. I would like for her to greet you. Good morning. It's always a pleasure to be with Pastor John, Pastor Tadema. We're so happy to be with you, and thank you for your warm welcome. It's always a privilege to be with Mommy Anameke, who is a true legend in the Assemblies of God of Nigeria. We went to Nigeria in 1992, just two babies almost, and uh, we met with a wonderful church there, many Assemblies of God people, many uh, established churches, but God helped us to join with people to do church planting. And in the, from the late 90s to 2008, we were able, God helped us to have a church planting movement that planted over 600 churches. Then God moved us to a place where it was the majority of a different world religion. And it has not been easy. We don't have well-established church planters that we can work with. We started a Bible school from scratch, and we found out the methods that we had used in Nigeria were not working for church planting. So God gave us the vision to, uh, to start Alma C. Gambia Foundation. It is a humanitarian foundation where we do medical outreach, educational outreaches, uh, we do agricultural project, projects, and uh, dig boreholes across the nation. Through this, God has helped us to begin starting churches as well. One of our pastors, uh, a few weeks ago, he was preaching in a village where we had a, an agricultural project. We had started a farm, and he would go every Sunday and gather a few people together under a mango tree to preach the word of God. The Alcalo, or the chief of the area, came to him, and he said, We do not want the name of Jesus taught here. You cannot come back and teach this. We want your water, we want your farm, but we do not want the name of Jesus. Well, guess where he went the next Sunday? He was back under the mango tree, and he was preaching the name of Jesus, and finally about 20 to 30 people were coming every week. The Alcalo came back, and he said, I told you, you cannot bring the name of Jesus to this place. You are not welcome here. If you come next week, I will be here, and I'm going to kill you. Guess where he was the next week? He went back and he was under the mango tree. They met even when it was raining. The Alcalo came and he walked straight up to our pastor as he was teaching and he was preaching. He walked to him and he stuck out, stuck out his hand and he said, I have to tell you, I'm very sorry. I have not been able to sleep since I told you I will kill you if you bring the name of Jesus to this place. He said, please, sir. Can you show me how to follow Jesus? Today, that church is not worshiping under a mango tree. They are worshiping in the house of the Akalo. The man who had said, very soon we will be building a church there, a church building in that village. This is just one of the many uh, stories of what God is doing in this nation where less than 1% of the population are evangelical Christians. But we know that we have a big God. God is sending more missionaries and more church leaders, more church workers for us to work with and to train. And God is present in this nation that needs so desperately to know who Jesus is. May God be with you all in Jesus' name. Amen. We are also pastoring a church. Our foundation is Alma C. Gambia Foundation. We have Alma C. Worship Center, Alma C. Training Center. We have, everything is Alma C. Some of you might not know who Alma C. is, but in the Quran, 
It's used about 11 or 12 times. And it's always used for the prophet Isa, who is Jesus. And so it's Isa al-Masih. And many of uh, our Muslim friends know who al-Masih is. And so we have al-Masih, which simply means the anointed one or the Messiah. And so pray that al-Masih will uh, become real in the little country of the Gambia. Amen. We have now... 23 in April, we will have 23 missionaries working in this little country. In Jos, uh, our population was over a million. In Nigeria, it was over 200 million people. But in our little country, we're just 2 million people. I believe it's doable, hallelujah, that God will win the whole country. So pray for us that God will reach the whole nation. Amen. Our prayer is that we will have a church within walking distance of every Gambian. Amen. I have a short amount of time. I joked the last time I was with Pastor, I said he has turned into an American because of time and these countdowns. I joked with him about that. You know, in Nigeria, you don't preach unless you preach for an hour to an hour and a half. And now they give me um, 27 minutes and counting. And so... I will have to give you a devotional today. <laughs> Amen. My problem is I have a sermon, so the Lord will have to help us. But in all seriousness, I want to preach to you about beholding His glory. And so I want to give us time at the end of the service to get into the presence of God. Thank you, Brother Emmanuel and the team for leading us in worship and into the presence of the Lord. And I don't want us to slip away from that. I pray that the Word of God will become real to us over the next few moments, and that we will just, the Holy Spirit will, will fill our hearts, and we will worship Him, and the glory of God will be seen here. Father, I pray that you would bless us over the next few moments, and that you would anoint our ears to hear, anoint my lips, Lord, to speak, what you would desire us to hear. We pray that your word will not return void. And we ask that your Shekinah glory would begin to hover in this place. And you would touch our hearts. Each one here, Lord, I pray that they will not leave the same way that they came in Jesus' name. May we all be changed and transformed by the power of your Holy Spirit. And we'll be careful to praise you and to give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The glory of God is difficult for the human mind to understand. Matter of fact, whenever we talk about the Shekinah glory of God, it is the embodiment of everything that God is, His whole character. He is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He is the one true God. He is omnipotent. He is sovereign. He's compassion. He cares and He loves for you. His love for you is great. He's the ultimate judge. He's our defender. He's our healer. He's our provider. He's our savior. He's our comforter. He's our creator. He's our Abba Father. He is glorious in every aspect. Matter of fact, it says in Psalms chapter 19, the heavens declare, the heavens proclaim the glory of God. The skies display his craftiness, his craftsmanship. Day after day, they continue to speak. And night after night, they make God known. Creation declares the glory of God. You and I can declare the glory of God. God's glory is not just a feeling. It's not just an emotion but it is a spiritual tsunami of everything that is contained in the character of God. Everything that God is, He wants you to have. His Shekinah glory is being declared to you, being shown to you. I pray that you will receive it in Jesus' name. Isaiah 42 says, I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other nor my praise to carved idols. He's a jealous God. 
He doesn't want to be shared with anyone. He wants to be your Lord and Lord alone, no one else. I pray that you would put him first in your life. You would put him in the center of your life. He would be the focus of your life, the focus of your family. The glory of God literally is translated as heavy weight, meaning the heaviest and the biggest and the grandest thing that someone is to explain or understand. And so the glory of God is heavy. The presence is heavy. In the Old Testament, whenever Moses said, I beseech you, Lord, show me your glory. The Lord said, you cannot see me and live. The glory of God is heavy. When Isaiah saw God in the temple, he was high and exalted and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. It was his glory that filled the temple. And Isaiah before that fell before the Lord as though he was dead. When the temple of Solomon was being started and they were celebrating, the priest could not enter into the temple because the glory of God was there. It was simply too much for them to handle. When the angels brought the wonderful message of Jesus' birth to the shepherds, all the skies opened up and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were very frightened. But this began to make a transition from the Old Testament to the New Testament. And the glory of God is now revealed through His Son, Jesus Christ. If you go with me to John chapter 1. Those of you who were in the morning session of uh, the teaching from Pastor John, he was saying, whenever you pray, you have prayer points, you have scriptures. I have a lot of scriptures today. So John chapter 1. John the Baptist is talking about here. He says, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. Verse number 7. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Everybody say light. Light reveals, light shines, light opens up. The light is Jesus Christ. To bear witness of the light that all through him might believe. Everybody say believe. He was not that light. John the Baptist was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light so that the true light, which gives light to every man coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. The light came to the world, but he created the world. And the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own did not receive him. But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. And to those who believe in his name. Verse 13. Who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I pray today that you have been born of God and that God reigns supreme in your life. And the Word became flesh. This is the key that we want to talk about. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness of Him and cried out, saying, this is he whom I said, he who comes after me is preferred before me, for he was before me. And of his fullness we have all received grace for grace. Or we could say it like this, some translation says grace upon grace. Grace and more grace. Grace for every situation. When Jesus comes into your life, grace follows. When Jesus comes into your life, the glory of God is now living in you. Everything that is of God is now made manifest in your life. No weapon can take it from you. No demon from hell can take it from you. The Bible says that no one can pluck you from my hand. He is with you and he is in you and he will continue to lead you. Full of grace, full of truth. And then I like verse number 18. No one has seen God at any time. The only begotten Son who is in the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. Declared, revealed Him to us. The Word became flesh. 
the word began to dwell among us. The light of Christ began to shine. The glory of God was now revealed through his son, Jesus Christ. The invisible now is visible. The untouchable has now become touchable. Before, in the Old Testament, Moses could not even look upon him or he would die. But now God has come to dwell among us. And now he says, I am touchable. You can see me. You can feel me. You can have a relationship with me. The unknowable has now become knowable through Jesus Christ. This is the greatest miracle the world has ever known. Jesus stepped out from eternity. He stepped out as the Word of God. He stepped out from the words of Scriptures and He began to live among us. He dwelt among us and now He is Emmanuel. He is God with us. The original place of worship for the Hebrews in the Old Testament was a tent. And they had a they had the place, the Ark of the Covenant, and the Holy of Holies where the presence of God dwelt. No one could enter there. Only the high priest, one man. And he had to go through several sacrifices to enter into the holy place. For the Hebrews, it was important that God's presence resided in that tent, that tabernacle. And it wasn't a building because a building like this, once you build it, you can't move it somewhere. But a tent is movable. And the tabernacle was a movable expression of the presence of God. There was a cloud by day that represented the glory of God. A fire by night that represented the glory of God. The Ark of the Covenant where the presence and the glory of God was dwelt there. For the Hebrews, it was a tabernacle that they lived with and they moved with. Now Jesus tells us in John chapter 1 verse 14 that the Word of God came and tabernacled amongst us. The Word of God now has left heaven and came to live on earth, to live with us and to stay with us. He was the walking sanctuary of God. He was the very presence and the glory of God that came to earth. Now He lives in us and He lives through us. Uh, he is touchable. He is knowable. He is, can be seen uh, and he can be experienced uh, by the power of God. John says, we have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only who came from the Father full of grace and truth. The glory of his deity. Jesus Christ, the word of God. He is the life of God and He is the light. If you read John chapter 1, these are the words that express who He is. And so the Word plus the life plus the light equals the glory of God. Jesus revealed God's glory to us. In His person, in His works, in His words, He was revealing who God is uh, and that God was through Him. Uh, and the only way to be in the presence of God is to go through Jesus Christ, the door of all that would call upon Him. He's the only entrance uh, into heaven. He's the only way to see the Father. It, it comes through Jesus. His deity was being revealed to us. Colossians chapter... Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in Christ lives all the fullness of God in human body. Before Christ came, people only knew God partially. After Christ came, people could know God fully. Because the visible, the invisible became visible. Jesus came and he entered this human life in a humble way, as a servant, and became obedient. But he had limitations in human form. He was 100% God and 100% man. This was his deity. But he entered into human form to pass through the struggles that you and I pass through. Now it says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered into heaven, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced 
all the same testings as we do, yet he did not sin. Whatever struggle you're going through, whatever difficulty you are having, whatever problem exists in your life, Jesus is here. He has walked this pathway before you. And now he offers you the glory of God in your life. He is revealing to you and declaring to you who God is. And if you follow after him, he will set you free. The word became human. In doing so, Christ became the perfect sacrifice for you and I. Jesus came as a sacrifice for all sins of all mankind. In 1 John chapter 3, verse 5, it says, And you know that Jesus came to take away our sins, and that in him was no sin. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be an offering for our sin, so that we could be right with God through Christ. I like 1 Peter chapter 1. Knowing that you are not redeemed with corruptible things like silver and gold or by the aimless conduct received by traditions of your fathers, but we are redeemed by the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. He indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest He is manifested. He is manifested here today. Hallelujah. In the glory of God, by the presence of God, He is manifested in these last days for you who through Him believe God, who raised Him from the dead and gave Him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. I pray today that you will know Jesus. You will know him as the savior of your life. You will know him as the redeemer of your life. Because through him, when you receive him and you believe in him, uh, the Shekinah glory, the glory of God will fill your heart and fill your life. The word became flesh. And in doing so, Christ became our perfect teacher. What does it say in Philippians chapter 2? Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. But he emptied himself, taking upon himself the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in the form of man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even the death on the cross. Therefore, God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus reveals himself and he reveals the deity of God. The fullness of God is revealed through Jesus. And then we have the glory of his grace. He said he came and he was full of grace in verse 14. Verse 16 and 7, it was grace for grace. He said the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. I'm thankful for God's grace. It is God's grace that has saved us. For by grace you are saved through faith. When God saved you by his grace, when you believed, and you can't take credit for it. You can't take any, you cannot buy it. It's not where you live. It's not where you come from. It's not that you come to church on Sunday. It's nothing that you have done. It's only by the grace of God that you are saved. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Brothers and sisters, there's no one like the glory of God. There's no one like Jesus as we were singing today. Just one look, hallelujah. Just one moment, it will transform you and change you. Just one moment in his presence. Uh, Brothers and sisters, uh, I'm thankful for God's grace. He said it was grace for grace. 
no matter what you're going through, uh, no matter the struggle that you're in, uh, there's grace available to you. Uh, We're saved by grace. Uh, We're sustained by grace. Uh, We move by grace. Uh, We go uh, from glory to glory, uh, from victory to victory, uh, from faith to faith, uh, from grace to grace. The glory of God's grace. His grace is available to you. The glory of God's truth. He's full of truth. He declared the truth. In Him, there was no falsehood. He was not like the other false prophets. He was not like the other false messiahs who were just imposters. He was the Son of God. He was the great prophet. He was the great teacher, but he was the Son of God. He was not even like the shadows or the types that were found in the Old Testament. He was more than that. He was truth himself. John chapter 4, verse 24. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John chapter 8, verse 32. You will know the truth, and the truth will set you. The truth will set you. Some of you are bound. Some of you are living in a lie. Some of you, you're blinded, and you can't see the way. I pray today that the glory of God's truth will be revealed to you. Your blind eyes would be opened. Just as Pastor said uh, earlier that the schemes and the, the attempts of the enemy that he has to destroy your life. The Bible tells us when Jesus was teaching his disciples to pray, he said, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That literally means deliver us from the evil one. I pray today that your eyes would be open and the Spirit of God would fill your life and He will deliver you from the evil one. Every snare of the enemy uh, that He's planned for your life, uh, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to you uh, and you'll be able to walk a different direction uh, because God's glory uh, is reigning supreme uh, in your life. The glory of God's truth. The truth will set you free. Tell your neighbor, the truth will set you free. When Jesus was praying for his disciples and for you and I, in John chapter 17, he said, make them holy by your truth. Teach them your word, which is truth. I pray that you will know the word of God. You will live the word of God. You will pray the word of God. You will speak the word of God over your life because the word of God is true and it will lead you into all truth. John chapter 14, verse 6, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. In John chapter 1, verse 17, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Truth is no longer veiled. Truth is no longer hidden. But in the life of Jesus, it's been revealed to us all. I pray that you would embrace the truth today. You will know the truth today. Jesus, in the fullness of God's glory, says it reveals to us everything of grace and truth. Grace is God's favor, His kindness given to you when you don't deserve it. And you cannot earn it. You cannot pay for it. If God dealt with us only according to truth, then none of us would survive. But he deals with us on the basis of grace and truth. You see, grace without truth would be deceitful. And truth without grace would be condemning. But Jesus came to give us grace and truth. He is God with us. 
his presence. He's the exact representation, the Bible says, of who God is, his nature. Whatever Jesus does, he does with grace. Whatever he says, he says it truth. If you want to understand what God is like, find who Jesus is. Jesus reveals who God is. And then lastly, the glory of his revelation. In John chapter 1 verse 17, he said, there's a whole new order of the way things are going. There's a whole new manner. Jesus is going to replace the Old Testament laws. Jesus is going to replace everything that was done in the Old Testament. Now he's come to reveal who God is. The image of the invisible God, it says in Colossians. The express image of his person in first, I mean in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3. The word translated declared, it gives us, it means to us to explain, to unfold, to lead the way. Jesus has come to explain who God is. Jesus came to unfold to us the mysteries of heaven. Jesus has come to lead us into the Father's presence. I pray today that you will follow Jesus. Jesus reveals to us the glory of God. He leads us into His presence. And when we're in His presence, transformation happens. I don't know about you, but I need to be transformed by the power of Jesus. I need to be changed by the power of Jesus. You know, I... I think I'm a pretty good guy, but if you talk to my wife, my wife will tell you she's thankful that God has changed me and that God is continuing to change me. Because whenever you seek after God and you desire to be in God's presence and you desire to live in the Shekinah glory of God, He will transform you. He will change you. What does it say in Romans chapter 12, verse number 1? And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all He has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind He will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship Him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think then you will learn to know God's will for you which is good and pleasing and perfect our transformation in when we get into God's presence and in his glory he will transform us little by little every day we become to be more and more like him Our transformation causes us to have a renewed mind. And we set our minds on things above. I'm coming to a close because of my time. When the Apostle Peter was writing his letter in 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 1, he said, To the elders among you, I appeal as a fellow elder and a witness of Christ's sufferings. And one who will also share in the glory to be revealed. You see, whenever Jesus first came, he came as one who suffered. But when he returns again, it's going to be a glorious return. But we don't have to wait for that return because the Bible says we can sit together with him in heavenly places. We can enjoy a little bit of heaven here on earth. But I'm thankful that Jesus is coming again. And when he comes, it will be a glorious time. It will be a wonderful time. The Bible tells us that the Spirit testified beforehand of his sufferings uh, and then the glories that would follow. You see, in his first coming, he was a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes. But in his second coming, he is a king in majestic apparel. 
in his first coming, he had nowhere to lay his head. But in his second coming, the Bible says he is the heir of all things. In his first coming, he was the weary traveler. But in his second coming, he is the untiring God. In his first coming, he was the lowly Savior acquainted with grief. But in his second coming, he is the mighty God anointed with the oil of gladness. In his first coming, he had no beauty. He had no form that you would look upon. But in his second coming, he is the chiefest among 10,000. He is the bright and morning star. In his first coming, he was rejected by Israel. He came to his own, but his own did not receive him. But in his second coming, he will be accepted by all nations. Isaiah says, for unto us a child is born. Unto us the son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder. His name is wonderful. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father, the prince of peace and of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And of his kingdom, he will reign forever and forever. Lift up your hands and worship him. Ask for the glory of God to fill your life. You see, in his first coming, uh, wicked men uh, threw stones at him. uh, But in his second coming, uh, wicked men uh, are going to cry for the rocks uh, to fall down upon him. Uh, In his first coming, uh, he wore a crown of thorns. uh, But in his second coming, uh, he will wear a crown of gold. Uh, In his first coming, uh, he wore uh, a robe of mockery. uh, But in his second coming. Uh, Revelation 19 says uh, he will wear a robe uh, dipped in the blood uh, of his enemies. Uh, The Bible says uh, I saw heaven open uh, and behold a white horse uh, and he uh, who sat upon him uh, was called faithful uh, and true uh, and in righteousness uh, he doth judge uh, and make war. Uh, His eyes uh, were a flame of fire. Uh, His head uh, had many crowns and he had a name that no man knew but himself and he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood and his name is called the word of God hallelujah in his first coming his hands were pierced with nails but in his second coming his hand will carry a sharp sickle in his first coming his feet were pierced with nails but in his second coming his feet are going to stand on the Mount of Olives in his first coming wicked soldiers bowed down and mocked him but in his second coming therefore for God hath highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father lift up your hands stand on your feet Let's begin to ask God to give us his glory, to fill our hearts. In his first coming, I got one more. He died and delivered up his spirit. But in his second coming, he is alive forevermore. He said in Revelation chapter 1, I am he that was dead. But behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of hell and of death. In his first coming, he was laid in a borrowed tomb, but in his second coming, he will sit 
on his throne forever and forever. Uh, in his first coming, uh, he was the sinless Lamb of God uh, that was sacrificed for you and I. Uh, but in his second coming, uh, he is the Lion uh, of the tribe of Judah. He will never die again. Uh, he will never succumb to the grave. Uh, he's alive uh, and he's alive uh, forevermore. Jesus reveals the glory of God. May the Shekinah glory, if you want that glory in your life, lift up your hands. Begin to call out to him right now. Father, fill our hearts. Transform our lives. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Lead us and guide us, Lord. Change us. Renew us. Move us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's glory is revealed to us. Today, if you are here and you do not know who Jesus is, I want you just to lift up your hand. You want to know him. You want him to be your savior. You want to receive grace and truth in your life. I want you to lift up your hand. Yes. Yes, your hands are lifted. This is the glory of God. When we accept Jesus, God's glory fills our life. Hallelujah. You need Jesus. Come forward. You need him to save you. Come forward. We're going to pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Change me. Hallelujah. Could we all just begin to say, change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Transform me, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your glory be in my life. Amen. We're going to pray for each one of you. I want you to repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And I know that you died for me. I repent of my sins. And I turn away from that life. Come inside my life. Change me. Transform me. Make me like you. I receive you as my Lord and as my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for changing my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Father, touch them we ask. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Clap your hands and give God praise. Come on, stretch your hands towards God's servant. With all I surrender. people shout a big amen. Were you blessed by the word of God this morning? Come on, come on, come on, come on, appreciate God. You can feel the fire. Lift your hands, somebody shout, let the glory of God rest upon my life. Come on, you heard the word, come on, pray. Open your mouth, lift your voice. Say, Lord, let your glory rest upon my life. I ask for your Shekinah glory. Come on, lift your voice. Wherever you are, all over this building, say, Lord, let your glory. Let it rest upon me. Let it rest upon me. Let it rest upon me. In the name of Jesus. 
lift your voice, say, Lord, let your glory, let your Shekinah glory rest upon my life, rest upon my life, rest upon this house. In the mighty name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you glory. It is in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. And let the church shout the loudest amen in the building. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your servant. Thank you for every life that has received your word this morning. We pray that your word would remain indelible in our hearts. We pray that the word of God would fall on fertile ground. We pray, Lord, that the devil will not steal the word from our hearts. But this word will produce fruits unto eternal life. We seal it in the blood of Jesus and we decree and declare that we will manifest the Shekinah glory of God. The word will be made flesh in us. It will dwell among us and we will behold the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you for your word and we'll give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Come on, clap your hands, give God praise. Thank you, Reverend Scott. Thank you, Reverend Lavada Ennis. Great word of God. That's good. Assemblies of God, full gospel preaching. Amen. Clap your hands one more time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. How many of you have been blessed this morning? If you're blessed, shout, I am blessed. We want to thank you for being a part of our service this morning. Before we go, I want to encourage you from Scripture, the book of Acts chapter 2. Scripture says they continue daily in the temple, breaking of bread and fellowshipping with one another. And the Bible says they found favor before all people and God added to them daily such as ought to be saved. You may not know but let me share this with you. As a pastor, it's a big responsibility before God for God to assign the lives of men in your hands. Everybody, please listen to me. And I speak with trepidation in my heart, with all due respect before God. Your life is important to God. Your Christian journey is important to God. Nobody is promised tomorrow. Nobody. You can be here today. And tomorrow God can call you home. You need to watch your life. You need to watch your life. Because God will require of it from you at any time. It's so important to understand that Sunday, Sunday service is not sufficient for your Christian growth. Let me say it again, respectfully. Sunday, Sunday service is not sufficient for your Christian growth. So you may not know, so let me help you. Because what gets talked about gets done. Every Monday morning, as a church, we meet on Zoom prayer line to pray at 6 a.m. If you are not aware, please, I want to encourage you to join the prayer services at 6 a.m. It's on Zoom, it's on for 30 minutes, but it starts your week with power. Amen? We've been doing this for years. Since the beginning of the church, the church has never skipped a week of prayer. Never. And God has been gracious to this house. Until Jesus comes, we will not skip prayer. It helps you because prayer is the only way you can pull God's power and his will done on earth as it is in heaven. If the devil wants to destroy your prayer life, he will stop you from praying. Everybody, so please, that is available to you. At the close of the service, please, technically, you can flash the, the, the information about the Zoom prayer. On Wednesday in the evening, we have midweek services. That's where we study the scripture. You open your Bible. You can ask questions because Sunday morning like this, you can't do that because of time. So I encourage you, try, make effort. It is important for your growth. It is important. 
Then Friday night, there is prayer service at 7 p.m. The devil is a bad devil. He is. You have great plans for the future. You need to pray those plans to pass. If you don't pray, you become a prey. So I encourage you. I encourage you. I beg you. In the name of the Lord, it is important for you to pray. Jesus said, men ought always to pray and not to faint. So please, you love that marriage, you got to pray for that marriage. You love those beautiful children, you got to pray for those children. You don't know what happens to them at school. You don't know what's going on with them. You don't know who is influencing them. You need to pray for them. I'm bringing them to the house of God. I beg you. You know all those beautiful plans you made for the year? I told you make your plans. You put it on paper. You need to bring it before God. That is how plans succeed. I beg you. I beg you. God told me to tell you. And I encourage you as you do so. You will fulfill your destiny. Come on. I wish your amen was stronger than that. I said you will fulfill your destiny. God's plan upon your life will come to pass and it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. amen. We want to honor our first time visitors. We want to receive you right at the welcome center before everybody. So you need to beat the crowd. Anybody here for the first time? Today's your first time. Today's your first time. God bless you. Any other person? Let's clap for them. Now please just make your way and join our welcome team. Clap, 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 clap. Ushers, please help them with their Bibles. Amen. Keep clapping for them. Today's your first time. Any other first timers around you? Please, all those around them, clap for them. Come on, come on. If you are the one that came the first time, you want someone to clap. Keep clapping for them. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Appreciate them. Keep clapping, keep clapping. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping for them. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Amen. We have a reception for you. And the, the leaders will visit with you. And we have a gift for you. And the Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout a big amen. Are you glad you came to church today? Look at your neighbor. Tell your neighbor you are blessed. Come on, tell them. You Tell them you are blessed. I wish you had standing next to someone that would talk to you. Tell them you are blessed. Look for another person. Tell them you are highly favored. If they are not talking around you, look for who is talking. Tell them you are blessed. Tell them you are highly favored. Tell them you are favored. Tell them the glory of God is upon you. If you believe it, shout hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray as we close the service. One more time, thank you for being here. Father, we thank you. You have done us well. You have been good to us. We seal everything we've done today in the blood of Jesus. As we start this week, may this week be a glorious week. Bless and favor us from glory to glory. We give you thanks and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Somebody shout a big amen. amen. Next Sunday is Pastor Chidi's birthday. That's my, that's my best half's birthday. Amen. If you are not clapping, I suspect you. So next, next Sunday, we want to specially invite you and your family to the celebration of our beloved executive pastor. Amen. The morning service is going to be celebration service. Amen. And um, it's going to be a special one. So invite everybody. Tell them that we're celebrating God's servant. Amen. Amen. I, don't even, I don't even care where they're from. Just invite them. Just don't come alone. Amen. Amen. And let's celebrate the goodness of God. And in the evening, uh, we have a dinner reception is going to be a special one so come looking very nice amen and uh, it's going to be a special time at 5 30 is it 4 30 4 30 p.m all right it's going to be it's going to be special if i tell you it's going to be special believe it it's going to be special amen 
And that will be the first time we're officially using our ballroom. And I, and so I want you to come and let's have a ball. Amen. And, and, and it's going to be a great time because God has been good to this house. And we want to thank him for 40 years of grace and glory. And so please take this as my formal invitation to you and your family that we want to celebrate the goodness of God together. And I pray that God will bless you as you celebrate with us. God will cause men to celebrate with you. Ah, that is where your amen should be very loud. Yeah. Amen. Let us share the grace and fellowship, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. Sure, his goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever.